The story takes place in the ancient city of Aetheria, when the two palace guards, Nikolaus and Hans, have just finished their patrol. Nikolaus suggests the two go to a nearby pub to celebrate their payday. The pub Nikolaus wants to introduce to Hans is Izakaya Nobu, owned by a man named Nobuzaki, but people usually call him Taisho, which refers to the owner. The two guards step inside, and for the first time in his life, Hans has seen a Japanese-style pub. As usual, Nikolaus asks the waitress, Shinobu, to bring him two draft beers. Hans tries the beer and finishes the big glass in an instant. This is indeed the first time he's drunk such a fresh kind of beer, so he immediately asks for another. He returns to Nikolaus, noticing in surprise that his friend is eating beans without removing the shells. Nikolaus explains that this dish is boiled edamame with salt, a classic beer snack at this pub, and he should eat them whole in order to fill all the rich flavors. This snack is so delicious that Hans keeps taking it one by one with the beer until they run out of it. At this point, Hans realized that if the beans hadn't run out, he'd have eaten them until his stomach exploded. Out of all the first things, he's impressed by the nice waitress and the super chef at the pub. Shinobu then serves them with a bowl of Nobu's specialty odin, which is steamed veggies and egg soup. Hans takes a bite and is amazed by its majestic taste. During the meal, Hans can feel the flavors and smells of the veggies and eggs reasonably blend together, creating a mouth-watering soup. He even imagines this dish to be served to the northern gods. Although the guards have eaten a lot, their dinner only cost one silver coin. On the way home, Nikolaus especially tells Hans not to let their commander know about this pub. The Izakaya Nobu is just a regular pub in Japan, but there's one thing special about it. Its front doors opens to a parallel universe. After today's training session, Hans commander Berthold wants to have a night out with him, so Hans has to take him to the Izakaya Nobu. When the two have set in place, Hans orders two craft beers and a dish of boiled edamame. Just like Hans earlier, this is the first time Berthold has tasted draft beer. He's so into the beer that he quickly finishes his big glass in just one attempt. Hans tells his commander to eat boiled beans while drinking, which to him is the best way to enjoy the beer. But Berthold isn't easily pleased by such a snack. He would like Taisho to impress him with a chicken dish. Taisho agrees and tells him to wait for a bit. While they're waiting, Shinobu brings them a dish of whole pickled cucumbers. Berthold picks up one slice and puts it in his mouth. The cucumber is so good that he doesn't even realize it when he's finished the dish. In the meantime, Taisho asks Shinobu to buy some vinegar. As she goes out by the front door, Berthold and Hans are surprised by a part of the Japanese walk of life shown from the other side. Back to Taisho and his special order, he deep fries some chicken nuggets and then takes them out. After a few seconds, he puts the nuggets into the hot oil pan so that the chicken can be more crispy. Berthold doesn't get why the chef did that and complains about his tedious work. But the final result really surprises the grumpy commander. Berthold bites one nugget and it quickly feels like heaven to him when the sweet juice leaks after he experiences the crispy crust. At this point, he has to admit that this is the best chicken dish he's had so far. Hans tells him that this dish will be tastier if they drop some lemon juice on the chicken. But Berthold has no more chicken nuggets left on his plate. As Berthold regrets not having a chance to try the lemon with chicken, Taisho is making a chicken mayonnaise dish which causes Berthold to mouthwater. But that dish is Shinobu's dinner, not for him. He asks Taisho to make him the same dish, but the pub is out of chicken. Berthold can just scream in agony. The next morning, knowing that Hans had let Berthold know about the Izakaya Nobu, Nikolaus is worried that Berthold will be upset with them. But what really happens is that their commander, after greeting them, tells them to self-practice while he rushes to Izakaya Nobu to order a dish of chicken that he missed yesterday. That evening, Hans and Nikolaus are on the way home from work when they see a nobleman named Johan go to Izakaya Nobu with his niece, Hildegard. In the bar, Shinobu gives the two guests wet wipes to clean their hands before ordering. This leaves Johan with a good first impression of this place's owner's professional service. In contrast to Johan's elegance, his niece doesn't seem to be as nice. The little cranky Hildegard would like to eat something not salty, not sour, not spicy, not bitter, not smelly, not bread, not tubers and not eggs, but it must be super tasty. She seems to be unreasonable, but Shinobu just simply smiles and takes her order. Johan can't hide his surprise at the waitress's response. He and his niece went to almost every renowned restaurant in this city, but none of their best chefs managed to make such a tricky dish. A little bit about the guest's background. 
Hildegard's father was Johann's brother. After the death of her father, Hildegard was sent to her uncle's mansion, where she was given the best environment for everything. But since then, Hildegard hasn't been as innocent and cheerful as she used to be. She has been more and more spoiled and none of her nannies could tolerate her. Very soon, their challenging dish is served. To Johan and his little niece's surprise, the dish is in fact a hot pot. They are even more amazed to see Shinobu put tofu and veggies into the pot, as this is the first time they've seen people do this to tofu. After steaming the tofu, Shinobu places one cube in a bowl and pours a special sauce into it. This dish is called Ankake Yudofu, which includes boiled tofu with a thick sauce called Ankake. Johan takes a bite of the tofu and immediately feels like the tofu is smelting in his mouth. Hildegard also enjoys the dish very much. She has a feeling that she doesn't have to think about how she should chew or swallow the tofu. She's so blissful that the tofu meets her requirements and keeps eating it until there is nothing left in the pot. Taisho makes the guests some more delicious dishes and tells Shinobu to bring them to their table. Johan is out of joy to finally find a restaurant that fits Hildegard's taste, so he decides to take his niece to Izakaya Nobu once a week. These are Camille and Ignaz. They've just come back after doing business in another city. Camille has the intention to stop doing this job as there appear to be many drawbacks to the working conditions. Plus, he's about to marry Ignaz's sister. Ignaz is sick of being Camille's excuses and tells him that such a coward like him doesn't deserve his sister. And he wants Camille to show him his determination through a night of drinking at Izakaya Nobu. With the men all set aside, Shinobu brings them two glasses of draft beer and an appetizer. The two enjoy the beer and finish it fast. But Ignaz would like to order something else, as the beer isn't strong enough for him. Then, Shinobu serves another draft of beer to Camille, and for Ignaz, a bottle of Reishu, which is a type of Japanese rice wine. Ignaz has a sip and gets a brain freeze because of the wine's superb taste. Ignaz and Camille keep eating and drinking until they're out of appetizers. All of a sudden, Ignaz challenges Camille to eat raw fish to truly show his masculine character. Camille quickly agrees with the challenge, but it takes him one second to realize it's about raw fish, which to him might be poisonous to eat. Following Ignaz's order, Shinobu serves the men a dish of sashimi and soy sauce. Camille dips one slice of sashimi in the soy sauce and puts it in his mouth in front of Ignaz's shocked face. But contrary to Ignaz's thought, the sashimi is so delicious that Camille finishes the whole dish in an instant. After that, Shinobu brings them a bowl of seafood rice with salmon eggs in the center. She instructs Ignaz to mix soy sauce with a little wasabi, then add the mixture to the rice bowl for the best taste. After a few scoops, Ignaz is so pleased to experience all the rich flavors of the seafood blending together. And he continues eating the rice and sipping reishu until there's nothing left in the bowl. As his mood is high, he informs everyone in the pub that his fellow Camille will soon be his brother-in-law. The next morning, a tax collector named Gernot comes to Izakaya Nobu and orders a dish of pickled cabbage. Although he eventually eats all of the cabbage, the dish doesn't seem to please his taste. Seeing Gernot sit inside the pub, Hans and Nikolas don't want to come in as the tax collector doesn't leave a good impression on anyone. Gernot is known to be a fat cat who always exploits the poor for his own benefit. His aim here today is to investigate Izakaya Nobu's business so that he can generate the tax he should collect. As Gernot is looking around, he sees Shinobu making spaghetti for lunch, so he tells Shinobu to make him the same dish despite it being her lunch. In fact, spaghetti reminds Gernot of the time when he was with his mother, and she used to make him a delicious spaghetti dish every time he asked. After a while, Shinobu places a dish of spaghetti on Gernot's table, and the man is shocked to see it has a reddish color. He's never seen spaghetti that was red all over like that, but he soon figures out Shinobu has put red bell pepper, bacon, and tomato sauce in the dish. He doesn't appreciate this spaghetti much until he tries tasting some and is amazed by its sweetness and sourness, mixing reasonably together. Shinobu also tells him to add some cheese powder and black pepper to arouse the flavor. Following Shinobu's instruction, Gernot sprinkles some of the spices on his spaghetti plate. After one bite, he feels like he's floating out of space. The dish's mix of flavors even lets him experience God's love. It doesn't end yet. Gernot also recalls his memory of that time he promised his mother that he'd be a good citizen when he grew up. After the meal, Gernot compliments Shinobu's cooking skills and pays her a gold coin. 
From that day on, the tax collector decides to become a good person to keep the promise to his beloved mother. The next day, Nikolas takes a deacon named Edwin to Izakaya Nobu after knowing that the pub was robbed. To his surprise, they were still open as usual. Shinobu serves the two of them light seared bonito with draft beer and reishu. Nikolas tries a piece and feels that it tastes fresher than ordinary raw sashimi. Edwin would like to have some salty snacks while enjoying reishu. Nikolas suddenly remembers that they are here to ask about the robbery, not to eat. Shinobu tells them that this morning, when she just got here, she found the front door had been unlocked. She immediately knew there was someone sneaking in to steal things. It turned out the robber was a little girl in tatters named Eva. Therefore, Shinobu and Taisho decided to let the girl stay at their bar and she'll wash the dishes to earn money. Seeing that the case has been solved, Nikolas and Edwin resume their eating session. Nikolas can't hide his surprise when Shinobu tells him that Edwin is also a regular customer at Izakaya Nobu. Seeing everyone really enjoying the pub's atmosphere, Eva is happy that she has a chance to work here. Today, Shinobu and Eva are so bored as they have no customers, so Taisho tells Shinobu to close the pub early. When she's at the door, she finds Nikolas collapsing in front of their pub. After going inside, Nikolas starts recalling everything. It all happened yesterday. While on his patrol, Nikolas saw a bunch of thugs bullying a little boy. As a palace guard, he can't turn a blind eye to this and decides to stand up for the boy. However, he was not a match for those thugs, as they outnumbered him. Eventually, they were the ones to beat him up. The next morning, Nikolas is scolded by his commander for embarrassing the whole guard squad. Berthold also asks Nikolas to stay after the regular training session for further practice. He was asked to carry a huge bag of weapons on his back and walk around the training pitch. But Nikolas tried to distract himself from his tiredness by thinking of the grilled pork dish at Izakaya Nobu. Seeing his subordinate's happy face, Berthold asks him to carry even more weight and do push-ups. This time, he thought of the steamed taro, which is a perfect match for Reishu. His smiling face really pissed off Berthold. The commander then hung Nikolas upside down with the weapon bag tied to his hand. But the young guard continued to imagine himself having a steaming bowl of odon with veggies and smiled while doing crunches. In the end, Berthold gotta let Nikolas go because he didn't expect Nikolas to complete the training that easily. After listening to Nikolas' story, Taisho has made a bowl of hot pork soup to warm him up. Nikolas eats the veggies and meat and quickly feels the warmth spread through his body. The soup is a perfect combination of fresh taste and the smell of veggies. The dish is absolutely next level. The next day, as usual, Gernot goes to Izakaya Nobu for spaghetti and sees a couple of noblemen inside. It is really hard for him to make this decision, but Gernot has to leave the place as he doesn't want to run into those troublesome people. It turns out, Bretano, Baron of the Empire, has heard of Izakaya's unique dishes. Thinking that he's tried all the delicious food in the world, he wants to come here to verify the rumor. He orders a dish called schnitzel. Taisho and Shinobu don't understand what the word means because it's the language of this world, not Japanese. So Taisho asks Brentano to give him a little time so that he can go ask the guards what the dish actually is. Meanwhile, seeing Brentano and his otherlings playing cards to kill time, Shinobu brings them a dish of salad sandwich as their appetizer. Brentano is amazed after his first bite because he's never eaten such a creamy and soft egg sandwich. Following their master, Brentano's otherlings also take some bites and the plate is completely empty in an instant. Brentano orders another dish of sandwich, but this time he'd like to try another flavor. Shinobu's got an idea. She slices the pork and deep fries the slices with breadcrumbs. The outcome is crispy pieces of fried pork, which she'll use as the filler for the sandwich. Right in their first bite, Brentano and the others can feel an explosion in their heads as the texture and flavor of those sandwiches are so well done. After the meal, Brentano is satisfied by how Shinobu has proven to him that there are more delicacies in the world he hasn't yet tried. He puts a sack of gold coins on the table and leaves without waiting for Taisho to come back. Coincidentally, schnitzel is a deep fried breaded pork that Shinobu has made for the noblemen. Three months ago, before the grand opening of Izakaya Nobu, Shinobu went to the Inari shrine to pray for their well-off business. Despite being reluctant to do this, Shinobu eventually put a 10,000 yen bill in the offering box at the shrine. 
On the day of opening, Taisho and Shinobu were surprised when Izakaya Nobu's back door opened into an alley in Kyoto, but somehow its front door connected to a strange world they'd never been to. And that was how the story of the mysterious Izakaya Nobu, which links two parallel worlds, took place. Back to the present time, one night when Shinobu is about to close and tidy the pub, she meets a mysterious customer. She is a beautiful woman in a red and white kimono. The woman would like to have the fried tofu dish at their Inari altar, so Taisho makes a newly fresh fried tofu for her, who will serve their customer with food on the altar. At this point, Taisho feels that it'd be a lack of taste if the woman only ate fried tofu, so he takes out a griller and puts the tofu as well as some taro on the hot coals. Both Taisho and Shinobu feel that the customer's outfit is pretty odd. It seems that she's from the feudal hierarchy, not to mention that she looks kind of familiar, just like they've met her somewhere before. Not long after, Shinobu serves the woman grilled tofu and taro. Taking a bite of crispy tofu, the woman shows extreme joy on her face. Taisho also uses some tofu to make egg pouch tofu. The woman can feel the fried tofu soaked up plenty of broth, which creates a unique taste for it. After having finished eating, the woman vanishes without a trace. What's left is just a 10,000 yen bill on the table where she sat. It's until now that Taisho finally remembers who she is. She must be the Inari god in disguise as a human visiting to bless their pub. And that's all for today guys. I hope you guys enjoyed today's anime summary. Let me know your opinions and thoughts in the comments below. And as usual, please follow and subscribe for more anime summaries in the future. Goodbye everyone.